What's going on, everybody? Should be live. We're playing some MLB, the show 23 today once again. And I'm hoping that we can start to narrow it down as to who the franchise team that I use for the series coming to this channel soon may be. So we're going to go through some rosters and probably get into a game with a couple of the teams that I'm interested in. And possibly we may open uh, these packs. You don't see me open Diamond Dynasty packs very often. It's been a long time, but uh, thank you to PlayStation for sending me a copy of the game, along with a bunch of other stuff, including this uh, Tops 2023 Series 1 Hobby Box. So, I haven't opened it yet. I wanted to wait till I was live, and we'll see if we get around to that today. But opening day's around the corner, and hopefully it's also going to be opening day for an upcoming franchise. And like I said, I wanted to go through some of the teams today and just kind of see who fits the best because I haven't really done a, a big baseball series and franchise over here. And I'm looking for a fun team to spend the next year rebuilding. And uh, appreciate that, Adam, becoming a member to the channel. Thank you very much. And there will be a member stream coming later this week. I'll pick an evening. Probably going to be... Uh, Thursday or Friday nights and uh, every month I do a stream with the channel members and I have no idea what I'm streaming for that one but there will be a stream I will be live so I have been experimenting here with the Detroit uh, Detroit Pirates the Pittsburgh Pirates and they're certainly a team that kind of fits what I'm looking for I think I'd like to pick a team that has like a really small budget and try to play uh, a bit of money ball and try to just have that as a, a challenge and really emphasize trades and finding value and getting hidden, you know, stars to develop out of nowhere. So I don't think I'll pick a team with a very big budget. Can't I go ahead and see everybody's budget from this menu or can I only look at mine? Is there a way for me to see more budgets all at once? Let me see if I exit out of here and if I go to like start a new franchise. All right, team budget there. So the Twins have 188 and they're, you know, very middle of the road team, very middle of the road payroll. So on the low end, we're going to have teams like the A's who have 87.5. I have to control all 30 teams. Yeah, I'm going to skip that and just pick this, I think. Are we picking a team today? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. I'm window shopping right now. And, and uh, as LT here, Lieutenant Expansion Team. Yeah, that's something else I've been intrigued with because... I guess I wasn't aware that you could start a franchise with a custom team. And I haven't really messed around with this. But I also think it'd be really interesting to do like an expansion team. And uh, one of the hangups though is like logos, uniforms. Like I'm that's not what I'm good at. But it's a cool idea to maybe pick like a... Uh, an expansion team and I might mess around and see what the roster looks like because I've wanted to do an expansion franchise for a very long time I've wanted to do it in Madden and I almost picked an expansion team like this past year now for, to do that in Madden it would require me to basically sim a year ahead move a team to one of the like template teams they've had for the last like eight years and haven't touched them and then like simulate some sort of a expansion draft and it would be really strange but the possibilities of just going into a new franchise with a new team in this game is pretty intriguing current roster doesn't have fernando tatis at all make sure he's there before starting yes i have seen that there are a few players that aren't on rosters um Senga is another one that isn't on that roster and perhaps there will be an opening day roster that comes out soon but I probably need to download something to include Tatis because he won't be reinstated for a while 
and won't be in an official roster. So, kind of strange how he's not, like, on there, but we'll roll with it and get a roster set up. No worries. Does it allow for an expansion to 32 teams this year, or is it still just replacing one of 30? I think it's the replacing one of 30. So if we just, like, don't do anything here, well, I'm not really changing the, na the name of anything. Yeah, it just replaces a team here, so... It's not uh, a true expansion mode, but... I do think that uh, making a custom team would still be interesting unless I take over that existing team's roster. I don't know how that works yet, but really interested in that possibility. But let's just go through some actual teams today, and I want to look at the budgets that are on the lower end. Move the A's to Vegas. Tweak the unis a bit and build a state-of-the-art stadium or get someone's help. Try to adjust payroll, too, since it's in Vegas. That's another option, Vlad. I think that's uh, intriguing to give a team like the A's a new stadium and kind of a whole new fresh start, I guess, for the franchise. So the A's don't have a lot going well for them. When a few years ago, they were a really fun team to watch. I really enjoyed like turning them on and seeing like Matt Olson and... Ramon Laureano, they had uh, uh, Mark Canna who was having a really good year a few years back, and Frankie Montas, so many good players on that team, and they're almost all gone, it's like the only player from that core left is Ramon Laureano, and obviously uh, his ratings aren't what they once were, and he's slipped a ton since 2019, so... I mean, if you want to rebuild, you got some time on your hands. I mean, this is kind of the, the ultimate rebuild right now. Yeah, Matt Chapman, that's right. They had a fun, fun team. So the A's are certainly in contention. The Mariners spend double what they spend. The Rangers spend 242. Let's stick to the American League for now because I am leaning American League. Got the Royals at 140, Tigers 170, the Guardians at 129. So I've already done a series in the American League Central. I, I like to do something different. And while there is some rebuilding to do here with Cleveland, they have a lot of really good pitching here in the organization. And I think I want something a bit more challenging. Chicago 221, the Jays 238, the Rays only spend 140 but still compete. And you got the Baltimore Orioles who like the Mariners have gotten significantly more intriguing in recent years and seems like they have a really good young foundation to carry them into the future. You see like it's ranked by overall 27, 25, 26, 28, 28. Good situation here. And still guys like Gunnar Henderson, Grayson Rodriguez. Whenever I'm describing rebuilds, I talk about like growing a team versus, you know, having to go out and find the players. And I always like being able to go and try to find those players. Teams like the Orioles more so to me are teams you develop into something. Maybe you add a few guys here or there, but I think that your foundational pieces are already on the roster. And then, obviously, uh, Red Sox, Yankees don't really fit in my criteria. The Rays have been pretty solid. Good pitching. Stars like Wander Franco to build around. And then in the National League, we get down here. We got the Braves, who are, like, the uh, best team in the league right now. Miami, 131. Team budget. They, uh, they also have some really good pitching. And the cover athlete, Jazz Chisholm. They also traded for Luis Arise, who was a 73 overall, because I'm guessing defense is weighing things down. Well, if you're trying to hit a single against the right-handed pitcher, he's a 99 overall player, but everything else he's a bit worse at. It does seem like the overall scale has just dropped significantly in this game. 
Like, Arise being a 73 just doesn't feel right based on, like, the scale I'm used to. But Miami isn't a bad choice. I like the uniforms a lot. I'd have a second chance to try and develop Garrett Hampson. I don't know if I'd be successful there either, wherever he is on here. You got the Mets, 349 million. Are you kidding me? The Yankees are allowing themselves to be outspent. Verlander, Scherzer, Diaz, unfortunate injury in the WBC, Alonzo, Lindor. And they kept around Brandon Nimmo, one of my favorite players to hit with. Philadelphia spends a bunch. Washington now. They won a ring a few years ago, and now they're nowhere close to doing that again. Look at the overalls here. 84, 82, 74, 71, and below. I traded for Mackenzie Gore. That was in the uh, Juan Soto trade last year. So they have a few guys to maybe develop, but they're still a ways away once again. Got the Cubs and the Reds, another team that, like the A's, had a core and then just deconstructed everything, lower budget, and now here they are. Hey, Gold Sparrow, I appreciate you becoming a member on the channel. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Tyler Stevenson is their number one player. Alexis Diaz, Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo. Joey Votto, he ain't going nowhere. At 39 years old, 15 years of major league service time, 342 career homers, over 2,000 hits. RJ becomes a member now. We got three new members in the stream already. Thank y'all. Cincinnati. I haven't done a series with a Cincinnati team like ever, have I? Will Myers... Lucas Sims, Milwaukee, you know, they got a ton of pitching. They win all their games like three to two, but it can work in the National League Central. The Pirates are another team that, you know, doesn't seem to be as interested in fielding a championship contender. They bring back Andrew McCutcheon to try and fill some seats. You got O'Neill Cruz, Key Brian Hayes, Brian Reynolds. But another team that I think fits the criteria that I'm looking for. Cardinals spend a lot of money. And uh, they're typically at least an average to above average team. Can you do an expansion team instead? I'm probably going to look into like what that all entails as far as the roster and what like the starting point looks like. I'll consider it. And then I became a member because you'll choose my Cubs. The Cubs... Yeah, they, they spent a little money here in the last couple of years. Seiya Suzuki comes over from Japan. Might be someone for them to build their next winning team around. Dansby Swanson, big free agent edition. I'd probably keep them in the running, although they do have a higher budget. It's an above average one. There is... Uh, air I'm not going back to the NL West, so... You know, I love playing with my Rockies back on MLB 21. And if you're looking for a team, pick them. They're a really, uh, you know, they're kind of fun. They got Charlie Blackman. He's fun. CJ Krohn. Herman Marquez, who pitches well in Coors Field even. Relatively speaking. But hey, if you want to build a team that can hit a bunch of home runs, just go play in Coors. You'll give up as many as you hit or more, but still. I'm a Twins guy myself. Hey, I'm a Twins fan too. You probably know that. Maybe you don't. Griffey Jr. will be the fourth highest paid red based on his $3.6 million. That is uh, a fact. Yeah, I didn't even know he was getting deferred payments until like yesterday. And... Uh, <laughs> Ah, 
You just want to see these teams do a bit more, right? Appreciate that, Scorpio. Thank you, Jake. Hope you're doing well, too. So we got the Reds here. Marlins or Angels. Trout and Otani need you. That's another really intriguing starting point just because, like, they feel the clock ticking. You know, Otani is going to be a free agent, and Trout's not getting any younger. He's not going anywhere, but you got two of the best, maybe the two best players in the game, and you can't even sneak into the wild card. There's also Anthony Rendon, and man, they're, they're kind of harsh with some of these ratings. I mean, you look at Rendon, 77 overall, C potential. I know it hasn't been great here in L.A. I didn't realize it's been three years. I feel like the Nationals World Series wasn't that long ago. But, you know, three years is probably warranted to drop things significantly. Especially, even though he's played all, a bit of all three years, each year has shown points of decline. Negative war even last year. That's rough. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of taking a low budget team. It's not 100% I'll take a team with a small budget. But if I had to like... Think of who my favorite options right now are. It would probably be Oakland. And then Cincinnati. Um, probably the Angels just because of the, the unique challenge that they bring in being able to play with Trout and Otani, but having to find other players to put around them. And then, uh, the Pirates. And then you got two situations here with the Nationals and Cubs where it's like, they might not be in the best, uh, spot right now, but they have recent titles relatively i know the cubs was a, a, a little bit ago now and that core is gone but who to pick very difficult pirates have a great field if you're a pitcher the pirates have a wonderful field if you're a hitter maybe not so much definitely a lot of pirates support in the comments Fix the A's. Keep the rats in the park. I think I know what video you're referencing. For never playing MLB The Show, would you feel the game is worth buying just to play the franchise? If you've never played before and you like building teams... I mean, I never, like, suggest, like, buy a game, don't buy a game, because, like, what justifies uh, a $70 purchase is going to be different for pretty much anybody, but I really enjoy franchise because I really enjoy the gameplay. I've wanted to see the mode get better the last few years, and I feel like it has very slowly. The scouting additions this year are nice, but I've always been a fan of the way they handle player progression. I feel that it's really intuitive to where players will... You know, if they don't play well, they're not going to progress. And in some cases, they'll get worse. And that's how you have prospects who never manage to break through and become stars. And it's how you have guys really surprise you because they go on a nice run. And then their big season turns into sizable rating increases and stuff. Here's a fun idea. Choose the Angels and find a way to draft Sidney Jean Charles and add him as a young prospect. I feel like... Uh, um, that would almost make them like playoff contenders if they had Sid, Trout, and Otani. I have thought about making Sid to just throw him on St. Louis in this game and uh, see if we ever run into him. I kind of like that idea. Three hundred and sixty-six viewers right now. Thank you all for being here. Uh, no, we're keeping the Guardians' name as is. Hmm. 
I want to see, like, do they have a spot in here where you can see all the players at a position and their ratings? Because it just feels like the, the roster has significantly lower overalls. Like, maybe this is the way to do it here. Hey, Kane, finally caught a live. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate that, Kyle. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to pick a, a franchise team because there's so many uh, directions. And a lot of people in the chat, you know, get excited for various teams. And it's like, no matter what, you know, I'm only satisfying a portion, like, with their top option. Let me see here. I just want to see, like, all 80 and up. I'm just curious about some stuff here. We got like a lot of um, players in uh, free agency that shouldn't be there. I think this is something to do with like Diamond Dynasty or something or like legend rosters. I don't know because like a 22 year old Bryce Harper in uh, the base roster. I don't really know what the, what to do with that. Yeah, I don't want to see legends. So, what if we get into a game with a couple of the teams that I've been talking about and just uh, just have some fun? Let's go live rosters. I don't think that even makes a difference. Oh, it's spring games. Or opening day games, which I definitely don't want to play today. So... Let's play a game with the Reds. They won 62 games last season. I already played as the Orioles. So yeah, here we go. The 100 losers. The 100 game losers. Let's do Reds and A's. Have ourselves a fantastic game here. I have suggested the White Sox as teams for people to use in franchise this year. I just think that there's a lot of young talent on that team with unrealized potential. And I really thought that, you know, a couple of years ago that they'd start to become the favorites once again in the division because it just seemed like they had like the, the big names for both pitching and then just their position players and having guys like Moncada and Jimenez, Abreu, like... I still feel like the sum of their talent is greater than the whole, and they've just, like, underachieved tremendously. But at the same time, some of those players just haven't played. <laughs> the Reds are a great option, man. He just hit him on the first pitch of the game. This is our ace on Hunter Green. He can't even get it to the catcher. How old is Joey Votto now? 39. On the ground. Come on. Steer starts it. Came over in the sunny gray trade. And we get a double play. I have played out of the park, but it's been a uh, very long time for me. 101. So if we do pick Cincinnati, Hunter Green's one of those players that'll be really at the forefront of the rebuild. That's a ball. Come on. Three pitches, though, as a starter isn't something I'm all that fond of. Yeah. One and two. You got to give me that one. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a clearer sign that Kane needed to take over a team. 
That was one heck of a first impression. All right, let's see what we hit here, 3-2. 103, but not in the zone. He's throwing them anywhere from like 100 to 103 in this inning. This three-pitch mix, though, for a starter is just like really odd to me. I can't remember the last time I started a game with a guy who only had three. I appreciate it, Deputy. Four years. Love the content and team building. That's what it's all about. Love building teams. TJ Friedel leads off for the Reds. I'm not very familiar with him. And Blackburn here has a delivery that's... Looks like it comes out of the side of his hand or something. Do that again. Hopefully I can hit a little bit better than I did in my game with the Orioles. But no promises, especially using this team. But yeah, this is the settings I like to play on and we'll be using in Franchise. Right to him. So it's, you know, no PCI, really basic hitting, really basic pitching, trying to highlight player ratings. That's what it's all about for me in franchise. And that's how I stay interested. See, Paul Blackburn has five pitches. But are any of them any good? Lined into right center, Jonathan India. That can be a double as he hustles into second, and he's in there. I don't think I'm deciding on a team today. I'm just trying to view feedback and, and go through some teams and get closer to a decision so I can get that first video out here very soon. So first video might not have opening day. It's probably going to me go through the team and like introduce everything. And if I could do like my opening day episode on actual opening day, I think that would be ideal. And I'm still thinking about, you know, how these episodes are going to look over here because I haven't really done a lot of baseball, but I experimented with the rule five rebuild and stuff. But if you're wondering if I'll be playing games or watching them play out like I do in my Madden franchise over here, I'm playing. That doesn't mean that I'm like not against, you know, watching some things play out. Like I do think it'd be fun to stream and, you know, maybe I play a game and watch a game or something like that. But that's really just a Madden specific thing. Stevenson, right center, dropping in, an 0-2 RBI single. That's what I'm talking about with two down. So this is going to be on this channel, Austin, so it's not really replacing the Rockies franchise. It's just going to be one of the new headline series of the second channel. Ah, I haven't liked my contact very much, but it's like continuing to work. Maybe the A's are the right choice. Oh, go to third. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought maybe I could score on that. All right, we got to run. We got three hits in the first. I'm feeling fine about it. I think both teams here are trying to pitch why they need some help. Just you don't see this happen every game. We got the first pitch hit by pitch. Then an ugly play in center field. There you go. But yeah, episodes are going to be a blend of the same things that you'll see in the Rockies franchise on the main channel. But I'll be doing live commentary and everything, so it's going to feel different. So, like, we'll, we'll do some player lock games. We'll go down to the minor leagues and check things out. We will see a critical situation pops up that looks interesting. And then, you know, there will be times to jump into full games as well. So I think that it's going to be similar, 
but it's just seeing how all that fits together and if there are any tweaks I want to make to the format to uh, fit this channel. But I've been I've been wanting to do this series for a few months now, and I've been you know bringing down the number of series that I've been doing, and I've laid out my content schedule for both channels where I've been posting a video every day, but typically alternating what channel I'm posting on. And I think that it's going to work out really well for what I want to do. And uh, switching to that format and making a little bit less content overall does let me... It opens up a bit of what I want to do. Like, if I want to spend more time recording, say, an episode here in an MLB franchise. Or if I just want to put a little extra attention into something you know what I'm really focusing on is trying to really focus on the storylines in my series and the big events that have been going on and including clips from previous episodes to illustrate those stories and I've been able to do a lot more of that because I'm not worried about putting out those extra videos before and sometimes I wasn't even able to get those done so yeah, I think that this MLB franchise is going to be a really good time. I've only done a couple franchises on the show, but some of my favorite content, and I wanted that strike three. One, two. Almost. See, the problem here is it's coming in too fast. And the umpire can't even tell it's a strike. We got the Oakland A's of umpires in this game. I feel like multiple of those could have been called strikes for me. I'm getting nothing close. Do teams increase the team budget? How does that work? I think it has to do with team success. Now, there is a feature in Franchise where you can pick, like, sponsorships, and it'll have, like, logos next to the score bug and the ticker down below, and it gives you, like, a, a mini game of sorts for upgrading your budget. Like, they'll increase your budget for hitting home runs or recording saves, and I don't plan on using that sponsorships feature. I want our budget to depend on how well we play. And, you know, I found out in the Rockies franchise, we can make that budget go up by improving team success. And I'd like to do the same thing here. Bottom two. And would you guys like to see some of these packs get opened? I got 24 packs in here. PlayStation sent me the box. They sent me MLB The Show. A lot of cool stuff this year. Thank you to them. That's a ball. But would you guys like to see some uh, IRL pack openings? I wish I had a second camera to like really give you guys a good view, but maybe we could still figure it out. Glad you can make it. Eris? Am I saying that correctly? Kane, what's your favorite soda? I don't really drink soda very often, but my go-to, if I, I just want a soda, is Sears. Steer sends it out to right center field, and we should score one on that. Uh, give me a good ginger ale. But I stopped drinking soda when I was, like, 17, and now anytime I try, like, any of the big sodas like coke or mountain dew like i i cannot stand any of it so you know like a good root beer a couple times a year sounds fine ginger ale too but in general don't really drink soda one ball, one strike. my favorite madden of all time oh man Another one to right center, and we're going to score a third. I like to get back to pulling the ball a little bit, but I'll take just production. What kind of packs did they give you? So this is uh, the top Series 1 hobby box for 23. 
There are 24 packs, 12 cards in each, or four, there's 24 packs, 14 cards in each pack. Packs with a special insert may contain only seven to 12, and each one has, each box has an autograph or relic card. Love the content as always, Kane. Please bring the Pirates back to the World Series. Got a lot of good suggestions. Appreciate it, Cody. Nick Senzel. There you go. Into left field. I don't think Paulie here is going to last a whole lot longer. Do I do commentary in real life? I only do commentary here for, uh, for the channel. And still nobody out, too. Back to TJ Friedel. What difficulty are you on? I play on Hall of Fame. So it's the difficulty I've been using for a few years. And that combined with uh, all the settings I have that put a lot of the power into player ratings gives me really good gameplay that can feel different from game to game. And that's ultimately what I want to see. Ah. Ah. Late swing. Got to speed some of these up. Oh. Thoughts on the Texas Rangers? I like some of the investments they've made and some of the players they brought in, but... Ooh! That's going to be a sack fly. I like to see it work out. I like a lot of the players on that team. Like, it feels every year that AL West is going to be, you know, not completely up for grabs, but you feel like any of those teams could break out and maybe become a wild card, and they all seem interesting preseason. But it's a lot like the, uh, the AFC West of last year. It's like the team on top, the Astros, just stays on top, and the rest keep uh, faltering and... Not living up to expectations. Now, the Mariners got in last year, which was exciting to see. I can't believe how well we're playing right now. Deep to right, center field again. Wave him around. I'm not afraid of that. It's 5-0 in the second. With teams have narrowed the search down to, I'd say we're between the A's, the Reds, the Angels. Um... Pirates, those are kind of the four teams really thinking about right now. Are the Reds this good or the A's this bad? Well, both teams lost 100 games last year and failed to make any meaningful additions. So I think that it was a matter of him leaving his slow cutter over the plate over and over again. Ah, out in front. So obviously in that group of four teams I was talking about, the Angels are a unique one in where they do spend a lot of money. They have a couple superstars, but they've still been, you know, disappointing and haven't made it work. But that's why they're the choice, why they're an option. Because outside of those two, it is not a great roster. What's going on, Mike? 5 nothing. Ah, come on, Joey. All that veteran experience is supposed to amount to something more than that. Careful with that low budget. It'll be tough to replace that right center wall with how you're wearing it out. I know. I'd love to hit one to left center, but I guess my timing right now is dialed up to be slightly late. Got to finish your scouting vid tonight. Yeah, I thought the scouting video was uh, a good way, if you're not familiar with how it works in this game, to see it in action. That's in, ball. I think it'll be really good stuff to include in episodes as well. Two and one. 
I'm hoping I can get into a good groove with this new franchise and move at a, a good pace over here because ideally I do a series for a year or less. And I know baseball rebuilds take a lot of time and there are a lot of games and so I've got to find a good cadence for everything. I play on a monitor, Isaiah. I used to play on a TV, but when I wanted to upgrade, I realized how much cheaper it was relatively to get a, a good monitor versus a comparable TV. Two on. We're still in the second inning. Can you believe that? Oh, everybody's going to move up a base. No, he's safe. A March to October. Because I'm looking to do a franchise, I'm probably not going to do a March to October. I'm really trying to keep the number of series that I'm doing down. And I'm really more so looking to just start the franchise and, and get a fast start to it, hopefully. Well, I wasn't late that time, that's for sure. What do you say? We're up 5 nothing in here. What if I go to Team Select, go right to the middle? What if we open a couple packs? Been playing this game on uh, Road to the Show as your awards disappeared. I'm from Northern Ireland. I love this game. I haven't seen anything about rewards disappearing, but I haven't gotten into Road to the Show myself. Any recommendations? I'm getting a monitor for my new job working from home, and they're paying for it. Might as well get one for my PS5 and work. If they're paying for it, that changes the whole dynamic. I honestly don't remember what model I have. Um... But mine's a few years old. I have a Samsung. It must be a 26 inch. It does 4K 60. I opted for 4K because I knew I'd be getting a PS5 instead of the higher frame rate option. But uh, depending on what you play, if it's for PS5 stuff, I mean, they, they do have the ability now to do 120 frames. So you'll have to consider if you want 4K or not. Monitors that do 4K and 120 frames tend to be really expensive. I find that 60 is pretty good for me because I was so used to playing on 30 frames for such a long time. But I'd probably check out uh, ratings.com and see what they rate for really good PS5 monitors tend to go there for a lot of the tech review stuff. Yeah, what, what say we open up this a little bit and uh, let's see what's in here. I don't have anything sharp near me to uh, get through this plastic, so we might have our first roadblock. I got something in here somewhere. I'll, I'll use a screwdriver. Alright, we're in. Will we, when will we see Kaysen Shore Road to the Show, Bears franchise backup? I don't even remember who Kaysen Shore is. You might be making that up, and I wouldn't even be able to, to say otherwise. Are you the person who keeps bringing up Bram Durth, defensive tackle from the Bears franchise? You must love that series. Unfortunately, the Bears series was uh, 
a relatively short one. And on top of that, uh, not a very successful end to it. Not as many channel legends have come of it. I gotta say, the name is starting to come back to me a little bit, though. The Bears are... What team did I have Pat McChesney on? The backup. Because there was a time when I was playing so poorly that I put in like a 57 overall backup to like give me a mental reset. I wanted to play with just the worst player basically because I was playing so poorly with starters. I needed to like just change my environment. It was my darkness retreat. And I think it worked. That was the Bears, okay. <clears throat> I really want to keep this box in nice shape. Now, uh, if I come across something I don't want to damage the, the corners on, not that I'm a big collector or care about selling, um, the only card, uh, like, protection I have is from some Pokemon cards I got years ago. So, I got these ready to go. So here's what the inside of the box looks like. Now, you got like 24 of these packs and one of these. So I don't I don't watch a lot of these openings. I haven't bought cards in a long time. These were given to me by PlayStation. Is this like the good stuff that I should save this for later? There's only four cards in it. Hobby exclusive. That feels like something you save for later. Chrome cards? <clears throat> uh, Gold Sparrow. I just went to Team Select and went to the middle. I could take over either team if I wanted to at any time. But because I put up five runs, I'm like, you know what? Just play some baseball. I'm going to open some packs. Do I think the Twins are underrated this year, Kane? I think they're appropriately rated. I think, you know, they're a middle-of-the-road team that could go either way, which sounds like every Minnesota team of my entire life, well, at least the Vikings and the, the Twins... So, it's certainly a very Twins team. Actually, you know what? That's not fair. They paid Correa. They've done a lot more for starting pitching. Ricky Nolasco is not the opening day ace. So, I am pretty happy overall. First pack opening. I, did it really take me 10 minutes, like a whole inning, to open a pack? Who we got up first? Who's the first card? Y'all know it. I don't. Anthony Santander. All right. I uh, traded for him in my Rockies franchise. Now, I wish that I had, uh, you know, like an overhead camera to where I could actually allow you guys to see kind of with me. So this might be the worst pack opening you'll watch on YouTube all year. Got uh, Nolan Jones for Cleveland. Paul Seawold? I'm not sure how to say his name. Cattell Marte. Ooh, we got a Mike Trout. I really want a Connor Joe. Like, my wish list is, like, uh, Connor Joe. I know he's with the Pirates now. But I need Connor Joe, Byron Buxton, Jose Miranda, Mookie Betts. I like to get Jazz Chisholm as well. Alec Bohm, Vinny Pasquantino, Jonathan Diaz, uh, uh, George Brett for the Royals. So they got some legends in here. Josh Donaldson, Trevor Story, Jimmy Hergit. 
And then a couple, like, team cards. Oh. That one almost left the building. Connor Joe is another reason to do the Pirates. That would be true. I do like Connor Joe a lot. I got I went into the Diamond Dynasty last year just to buy a Connor Joe that I never played. I just wanted it. I was talking to a friend who was like uh, talking about his Diamond Dynasty and I decided to log in and just see. And uh, I'm like, All right, I want to get this Connor Joe. So I did. All right, we're going into pack number two. Oh, we got... Oh, my God. What are the chances? What are the chances? I just hit five earned runs off this guy. It's Paul Blackburn. <laughs> That's amazing. Gabriel Moreno, Noah Syndergaard, Jack Suwinski, Jermaine Palacio, so the Twins. If that isn't a sign to pick Oakland, I don't know what is. I know, I feel like there's so many signs right now. What does it all mean? Graham Ashcraft, Mookie Betts. We got Mookie. So, that was one of the ones I wanted to get. JT Real Muto. Zach Thompson. I had him in the Rule 5 rebuild. Oh, boy. 2022 greatest hits in the same pack as Mookie Betts and Paul Blackburn. We got a Byron Buxton. And it's got a little holographic nature to it, too. So, I mean, we're two packs in, and I feel great. I feel real good. Uh, Taylor Rogers. Have him in the uh, Rockies franchise, of course. He's been on the move. Padres to the Brewers. And we'll see what's next. Kyle Stowers, Taylor Ward, Kyle Gibson. I haven't opened cards in a while. This is uh, this is fun. Oh, we got uh, TJ Friedel getting drilled here. Pack two was absolute fire. That was awesome. I got Betts, Buxton, Blackburn. Kane going for the Andy Reid at the league meetings vibe. <laughs> it is that time of year, isn't it? Oh, man. Andy Reid, my inspiration. You know, when I first, you know, got interested in, like, these shirts, it was kind of just as a joke. But then it quickly turned unironic fast when I realized that they're actually really comfortable. They're good for the hot weather I'm going to see a lot. And I, I love pineapples and palm trees and tropical stuff. So it's like, I'm just old now. Shea Langoliers are the A's. Cedric Mullins, Alex Wood, Jonah Bride of the A's, Glaber Torres, Oscar Gonzalez, Owen Miller, Santiago Espinal. Kind of a cool card here. This is uh, Braves' Greg Maddox. I have a pile of uh, cool cards that I'm putting together, and that's one of them. Yeah, I think officially the game comes out tomorrow. Oh, I need Devers, too. I need Rafi Devers. Badly. I need a Brandon Nimmo. I basically need my Rockies franchise, if we can make that happen here. Alex Cobb, Josh Naylor, Matt Chapman, Austin Meadows, and Christian Vasquez. Now with the Twins. But this card is uh, still... Uh, Astros oriented. Also, Williams asked to Dio. Is he still in the Marlins organization? I'm sad the Twins didn't sign him to a lifetime contract. 
An honorary Geronimo card? He went to Japan. Oh. I didn't know that. So we'll probably hear from him again in two years when he's hit like 120 home runs. I've definitely, yeah, I've watched some foolish baseball videos. I love that kind of stuff. Bryce Harper. There are Encarnacion, Ian Anderson. Not familiar with uh, Duvall here as much, but he's got a lot of minor league stats on the back. Max Castillo, Willie Adamas, O'Neill Cruz. That's a good one. Pete Alonzo. Oh, God. Adley Rutschman, who plays for the Dodgers in my uh, Rockies franchise. Uh, we got a cool one here. This uh, Welcome to the 30 Club. This is a Christian Yelich. And then, uh, like, a League Leaders card. This is like a Moments card. This is Arise Hoskins. Teammates bombard Reese after walk-off double. <clears throat> Rock the home state with the Rangers. I was really considering it for some time. But uh, I think there are just some other teams that fit what I'm looking for a bit better. Kenley Jansen, Yusei Kikuchi. I like Yusei Kikuchi a lot. The Twins did have Ostadio for a while, but I think they just didn't renew his contract a couple years ago and he went to Miami. He's probably best known for that uh, that pitching outing he had against the White Sox back when uh, your mean Mercedes hit the home run off of him. Patrick Wisdom, Yadier Molina. He's retired, though. J.J. Blade, Kendall Graveman, Aaron Judge. Yvonne Herrera, Seth Brown, Buddy Kennedy, Jorge Alfaro. This is a, a Jorge Alfaro that's all, all holographic. So that one's kind of cool. Hope you get an Ezekiel Tavar card. Well, I'd love to get some rookies. I'm going to call out any rookie card that I get, too. Another league leader. Teoscar, Hernandez, Rony Garcia. Jays fan here hoping for a Kikuchi rebound season. Yeah, I'd like to see him bounce back and play well for them. A couple years ago in Seattle, I really liked watching him play. I know it, like, a few... I don't know what year it was, but there was a time when, like, I was always playing against him in fantasy. Like, uh, in DFS. I'd, I'd stack against him constantly, and it worked for, like, a year. And then he turned it around after that, and I began to use him in DFS as a pitcher sometimes. And it worked out, so... I watched the Mariners games, watched him, and kind of wanted them to go to the Twins. Corey Seager, Tristan McKenzie, Jordan Romano, Ryan Presley, Eduardo Rodriguez, Stephen Kwan, Danny Jansen, Kyle Farmer now with the Twins. They got him here with the Reds. Like, this is a 23 box, 2023. But some of these guys that have changed teams, it's still like a Reds card here. Jonah Heim. Ooh, another very fitting card to get. The man on the mound is right here. So I've already pulled the pitchers from this game. I know. I, all right, where should I put this? I'm trying to figure out where to hold the, the card. Got Hunter Green. 
Nick Pavetta, and there he is. Another one crossed off the board here. We got Rafi. So we've pulled Devers. This is Joe Barlow. I'm pretty happy with the pulls. I guess I need a Luis Severino, um, a Lucas Sims, a Sir Anthony Dominguez. I'm, I'm opening this one from the back, and I see I pulled another Buxton. Oh, I also need a Zach Gallen. I got Paven Smith. Jake Cronenworth, Brian Servin. Oh, who doesn't? I need, I need to pull at least one Shohei. I mean, of course. Tyler Stevenson, I, I hit a double with him. Martin Perez, Seiya Suzuki, Steven Motz, Nick Prado, Dylan Bundy, and Gary Sanchez. Back-to-back -back twins, although Gary Sanchez is now playing in the Dominican League this year. Trevor Larnick, three twins in a row. And then Trent Grisham and Byron Buxton. So four of five were twins there for a second. They must have known that the Twins fan was getting this box. I did see JT Real Muto's ejection. That was ridiculous. We need uh, to be able to challenge ejections here. That was so bizarre. Oh, you're excited with the Joe Barlow? His family's super nice. Sat with him one game this past year. That's pretty cool. Anybody going to an opening day game? You, we do need Josh Bell. That is correct. We do not get Josh Bell. We do get Brian Hayes. Davis Martin, rookie card for the White Sox. Another Yelich. Reese Hoskins. Eric Fed, Jose Altuve, Antonio Senzatella, Scott Barlow, Corey Knable. Oh, I love that. I like these little moment cards. I remember this. I think I know which. I can't tell which home, home run this was. This wasn't the big one last year off of Liam Hendricks because that was a day game. But this is like a Buxton uh, Gatorade bath walk-off home run card. And there's like a set of these it looks like on the back that you can check off. But a walk-off for Buxton. So three Buxton related cards. Got a Michael Harris. That's pretty cool. I will not be at the Twins home opener. No, I will not be in... Uh, where are they this year for the opener? Casey? Be at opening day here in Seattle. Go Ems. I can't wait. Merrill Kelly. Fernando Tatis Jr. Derek Hall of the Phillies. Matt Strom. Chris Bryant. Tanner Rainey. Bobby Witt. That's a good one. Aaron Ashby. Brad Keller. Brian, Brian Bello. Keegan Thompson. Ryan Helsley. Oswaldo Peraza. Harold Castro. So no Josh Bell. No Luis Severino. No uh, Lucas Sims. Sir Anthony Dominguez. Brandon Nimmo. We still got some I'm looking for here. Oh, he asked about the home opener. No, I, I don't live anywhere near Minneapolis anymore. Aaron Nola, Corey Lee, Max Freed, Carlos Rodon, William Contreras, Brandon Crawford, Jonathan Aranda for the Rays. Josh Rojas, you Darvish. Ooh, what's this? A greatest hits of 2022. This is uh, a Bryce Harper. 
another holographic effect like the a Buxton I pulled earlier. Followed by a Jose Ramirez, a Twins, Sonny Gray. Oh, this is another one. Three Twins in a row, by the way. We got Sonny Gray, Max Kepler, and Yoan Duran. So, forgot about this. Forgot about the, the flame-throwing reliever. That's a good one to get. What are my thoughts on the pitch clock? I think once players are all used to it, I think we'll like the the speed the sped up nature i haven't been watching like a lot of live spring training i want to see like how different the broadcast will feel if you know i i really enjoy when you get into just the meat of the season and you do have a lot of just like it's almost like a podcast that's going on during the game and it's very conversational and i'm hoping there's still an element to that but i have seen some uh really fast at bats But I'm looking forward to it. What's going on, Bram Turth? Kane, are you a Timberwolves fan? I'm not really like a huge NBA fan, but the team I would want to win the most is the Timberwolves. Yes, I, I did see the end of their game last night. Pretty good stuff out of Cat. So I imagine they'll uh, be in the whole play-in deal here probably soon. Which do you like more, Twins or Vikings? Definitely much more hardcore into uh, the NFL and the Vikings. Like last year, maybe the last two years, I focused way more on just the Twins than the whole league. Jeter Downs, Tyler Maley, John Gray, Luis Arias. Got John Birdie, another Hunter Green. A different one, though. Eric Lauer, Brandon Marsh, Max Scherzer, and a Jake DeGrom, Max Scherzer combo. I think we're roughly halfway through. One, two. Still got some cards I'm looking for, but some of the heavy hitters, you know, I think if I only could get one, it was going to be Buxton, and I have like three versions of him. That missed, that's a ball. <laughs> I wonder if Kane would be willing to rebuild a poor small market team with a recent history of failure like the New York Yankees. As a Twins fan, I don't know if I could ever do it. Too much bad history there. Brendan Rogers, Cal Raleigh, got a Yankees Anthony Rizzo that looks kind of cool. I've always liked the crowd in this game, yeah, and they get like a... I feel like the, the stadium atmosphere in the show has always been... Uh, Solid, you know, you can see like fans stand up, and I think that they do a good job of getting loud. Salvador Perez, Trevor Rogers. I haven't pulled one of my uh, wish list cards in a little bit. Can he get there? Nice job. Still got plenty of packs to go. Cesar Hernandez, Chaz McCormick, Emmanuel Classe. Never feel good when he's on the mound as a Twins fan. Got a Riley Green rookie card for the Detroit Tigers. Ooh, what's this? This is a uh, Topps Home Run Challenge Jazz Chisholm. And I have to scratch the back for a promo code. 
Register and choose the game date you think this player will hit a home run. If he does, you win a parallel card. Feeling brave? Go all or nothing and double down to predict if the ball will travel more than 425 feet for a special parallel card. Okay. So I got the Jazz Chisholm home run challenge card. If you do scratch, be gentle. The code rubs off pretty easily. Good call. Yeah, the A's stadium is not one that I like. I especially don't like it when the Raiders are playing there and I have to see, you know, second base on the field. Like, just not a fan of that. That's probably the best part about the Raiders moving to Las Vegas. And we're on to the next one. Getting down there. Wander Franco. Clayton Kershaw, Andrew Benintendi, Christian Javier, Tommy Pham. A Cam Mitchell Pirates rookie card. He played 69 games last year. Michael Gibbons. I got like a really cool Kevin Kiermeyer one. <laughs> I mean, I like anything that has, like, holographic or some sort of texture to it. The so the Kevin Kiermeyer is cool. Darren Ruff. If I had to root for any other team besides the Twins, which would it be? <sighs> the team that I think I'd want to cheer for would be, like, the Rockies, but I just think that... That might be a, a train headed nowhere, you know. Ah, oh, if I had to, if I had to pick, like if you need me to pick a new team. I mean, San Diego is pretty cool. I went to a Padres game when I was younger. That was a lot of fun. Um, I could pick the Dodgers and just see what it's like to cheer for a team that's pretty good every year, because I have no clue what that's like. Um, the Braves are a pretty cool team, but they just won a couple years ago. I guess the Dodgers did too. I, I can't just pick a, an established winner. I have to pick like the, the Mariners. Got who? This is a Mike Trout Major League material. I'm trying to see what the material is actually like specifically from. That's cool. That's a Mike Trout material card. Whatever it is, I think it's cool. Going to watch the Dodgers in Texas this year? You going to uh, Rangers or Astros? Either way, that sounds pretty awesome. I'm guessing you're talking uh, Rangers. You say you're from Oklahoma. Hey, I hope someone is still in the chat that said this earlier. Ezekiel Duran. This was the card, right? That you wanted to see in this one? Rookie card for the Rangers. Mm. 
So this box is, uh, again, it's the 2023 Top Series 1 Hobby Box, and this was given to me by PlayStation, along with a bunch of other stuff for uh, the MLB The Show 23 release. Big thanks to them. I haven't opened cards in a while. This is definitely uh, a lot of fun. Got a Ryan Mountcastle in here. Jorge Alfaro. Two and two. Feel like I need to get one of those cards soon. Oh. Kane, I have a challenge for you. What's the challenge? Yeah, I saw the Lamar stuff earlier. So, the one thing I had a question about, obviously... They gave him the non-exclusive franchise tag, so like if a team wants to sign him to an offer sheet, then uh, it takes two first-round picks. If Baltimore was willing to just do a trade, would they be able to work out a trade for less than two first-round picks? Could some different compensation be created? Obviously, they're gonna. There's no deadline here coming up. They're going to try to get two first round picks, or the entire plan was just to get an offer sheet and then match it. I don't know if this really fundamentally changes anything. Yeah, I have seen some people suggesting Lamar to Minnesota, and I love Lamar. Like. I would love to see Lamar Jackson as the Vikings quarterback, but I do have concerns if he gets like a huge contract about how they would be able to build kind of the rest of the team because the defense is in full on rebuild mode and they got some things they have to address. But like in general, yeah, I'd love to see Lamar Jackson, but I think a team like Atlanta would be a lot more likely to maybe work out a deal or sign him to an offer sheet or something. Does the stadium get super packed in the show during playoff games? Would love to see Philly Stadium in real life, best playoff atmosphere. Yeah, I think the show has always done a pretty good job with like dynamic attendance and not every game is just a sellout. Like you'll see a lot of empty seats for like random Tuesday day games in July and stuff. But opening day certainly has a different feel, and the playoffs have always been pretty good for that, too. Got Corbin Burns. We had him for a little bit in the Rockies franchise. That's a ball. Outside. I think Atlanta would make sense because they could give up the picks. Like, yeah, they're awful, but even if they get Lamar Jackson, that doesn't, like, significantly hurt their cap situation like it would the Vikings. It wouldn't prohibit the Falcons from doing more. Got Paul Goldschmidt back to the Twins franchise when I had him in there. Gunnar Henderson. I like that one. Ooh, what do we got here? This is cool. Clayton Kershaw. All aces. This is apparently like the, the, the promo or whatever for this card. That one's very sweet. Kyle Hendricks, Ozzy Albies. One, two. Yeah, like situations like Lamar's don't come out very often, so it's it's hard to even predict what the next thing is, but I think after the draft, when the quarterback landscape is pretty much set in stone for the season, that's when you'll probably see some movement. Tim Anderson, G-Man Choi, Hunter Brown for the, the Astros. Liam Hendricks. Gregory Soto, I have him right now in that franchise. Uh, we randomly pull a Wade Boggs. One and two, the count. 
Ryan McMahon, I failed to develop him successfully. I think we have six packs to go. Kane, you should wear a hat for the next four streams. As I said last stream, I don't look good in a hat. And I don't feel normal wearing a hat. Herman Marquez, Patrick Sandoval, Shane Bieber, Kevin Gossman. We got an Albert Pujols in here. So they still have like a lot of guys who retired or switched teams. I got another Byron Buxton. This is another unique one too. I think I have like four or five Byrons. He's like the most common player I have and that's perfect. That was my challenge. Yeah, some people like to wear hats, but I've never been a big hat guy. I'd love to be, but I just, I'm just not. There we go. We got Jazz. I know I pulled like a home run challenge Jazz earlier, but this is more of your standard card. I don't expect to play Diamond Dynasty. I think it's a, you know, it can be cool. And I think they've done a really good job of giving interesting offline content to grind, but I know it's a, a lot of time it's a big time commitment, and I, I don't have the time. It is the one card collecting mode I think I'd be interested in playing, but I'm trying to do better about not uh, overextending myself and trying to do too much. Ethan Small from the Rockies franchise. Like, so many guys I'm way more attached to just because of that. I mean, I got this card here. It just makes me want to find an actual Vladdy in here somewhere. But I haven't come across one yet. This is, this is, here we go, throwback. We got a Jimmy Rollins. Welcome to the club. This is a 20-20-20 card. So. Reading the back here. 20 stolen bases. Over 20 home runs. I think it's 20 stolen bases, 20 home runs, 20 triples or something. That's like too many. It says, like, uh, Jimmy is one of only four players to add 20 or more stolen bases to a season that included that, that many of each extra base hit type. Did he seriously have 20 triples in a year? Can I get a fact check on that? That's one in every eight games. That's almost one a week. It's not quite one a week, but it's one like every eight or nine days. That's ridiculous. Ball, that's up. Seth Beer, this guy crushes me in franchise. Ronald Acuna Jr. So, in 2007... Yeah, pull up those uh, stats again. That's, a ball, that's, down. that's amazing. You know, I love, like, the big breakout stats as much as anybody, but, like, the blended stuff is always cool. Like, home runs, triples, stolen bases. 38 doubles, 20 triples, 30 home runs, and then at least 20 stolen bases. That's... That's a lot. He wasn't an all-star that year, but he won MVP. Is that true? Miguel Vargas for the, the Dodgers. Julio Rodriguez. Can you do an out-of-the-park series? More in-depth and more franchise-focused than the show. I think you'd love it, and you make a terrific series for it. Probably not a huge series. 
but maybe at some point I will check it out for uh, at least something smaller. I think when I am done with the Vikings franchise, I'll be able to look into something like that if I haven't replaced it. But right now the focus is to just get uh, the show on this channel again and get into the franchise soon. Appreciate the super chat. Got a Juan Soto. Yeah, that Jimmy Rollins season is ridiculous. And he played all 162 games at 41 stolen bases. That's got to be one of the most impressive seasons in like my lifetime. That's incredible. Yeah, there goes the shutout. Jose Reyes and J.J. Hardy were the National League reps at shortstop that season. Hard to believe he had a season that good and wasn't an all-star. I haven't gotten one of these names crossed off my wish list in a while. Like, our pack started out amazing. But, uh... As far as getting the guys I really, really wanted, that hasn't happened much lately. Nothing in that one. Oh, I'm on the last pack. I didn't even realize. No, that missed. That's a ball. And then we do have the uh, the chrome right. pack. That I've saved for the very end. Would San Francisco be on the consideration list? Beautiful park, cash to spend, had years of greatness in the tens, but needs someone to revive the team. I think just to get away from the National League West, I'm not considering them because I've already done a series and I'm still doing a series where like the Dodgers are the biggest enemy in our way. And I'd like to switch up the landscape a little bit, but I do think the Giants are great for all the reasons that you said. And uh, ballpark wise, I think they would be one of my, my favorite choices. All right, so we're on the final regular pack. We got a Sandy Alcantara. Bo Breesk of the Tigers. Eduardo Escobar. Christopher Morell. Tyler Wells. Robbie Ray. Michael Massey. Zach Davies. Not Zach Gallen. Ha Sung Kim. Jeffrey Springs. This Jeffrey Springs is randomly holographic. CJ Abrams. And we finish it off with a Marcel Ozuna. So there's still some cards that I wish I had uh, gotten. But I suppose now we move on to the grand finale. We got four cards in here. These are the hobby exclusive cards. They're supposed to be either a relic or an autograph of some sort. I think right in here. So here goes nothing. I have no clue what to expect. I just flipped it around. So we do have a key Brian Hayes. Another sign, you know. Who do we get next? Is it a good one? Jack Winkowski. Not as familiar. Next. Salvador Perez. All right. Who we get there? 
Don Mattingly. So the final four weren't like the greatest final four. I like the Hayes. Mattingly's cool. Perez, just not like my favorite teams or anything. No, that's in. Yeah, that was fun. What team will sign OBJ? I don't know. I'd be cheering for one of the New York teams, though, and that goes for all three of them, honestly. I think all three are, like, intriguing for different reasons. I'm not sure about Dallas now that uh, they got Cooks, if they'll be in the market as much. Or if OBJ will want to go somewhere where uh, he kind of slots in as a three. I don't know what his mindset is at this point, but I'm sure just spending a year with the Rams just probably has him wanting to win. One year and rebuild his status, I agree 100%. I prefer to st stream on uh, YouTube. All my subs are over here already. I think YouTube streaming's come far. So that was 24 packs. Plus I got the, uh, the chrome ones here. I got them all in uh, these plastic little case thingies now. Pulled some stuff I really like though. And... Uh, I think Byron Buxton was the most common player to show up, and that couldn't have been any better for me. Did he go? So, hope you all had fun with that. I don't know why I did that. I got a whole mess. Your attention, please. Now, looking for number 19. <clears throat> oh, the bat almost hit the pitcher. I see we got an 8 4 ball game now. If you could go back and revert a trade from MLB or NFL, which one would you do? I have the Vikings never trade Herschel Walker. Trade for Herschel Walker. <clears throat> you would remove the Cowboys dynasty in the process and the Twins would keep their picks and who knows how that would have changed NFL history. Maybe the Vikings would have gotten some of those Hall of Famers. You'll see what I end up doing with the Titans in the next video I do. I've been working on both the Game 5 with the Rockies, and I've been working on the Trade Deadline episode with the Titans. There were some trades made. You'll see who is on the move, what we got in return, and what we look like now after the dust has settled. Yeah, that series has been interesting because a lot of my franchises are very linear in a sense of they all start out and, you know, we typically struggle a bit early on and then we get a little bit better and we become a playoff team and then a stronger playoff team and then a championship winner. But my franchises don't often, like, hit reverse where we were awful. Then almost go to the Super Bowl. And now we're awful again. So it's uh, it's an interesting ride, but 
I have my view on the roster and what I think needs to happen for them to be winners again and time to put that plan in motion. Just picking up here and then I'll start playing again. Taken over. Ooh, back up the middle and through in the center. <clears throat> A modded franchise? Probably not. I like to check it out, but... I just don't think that I have time to, uh, to commit to another big series like that right now. I'm really hoping that I can focus primarily on the Titans franchise and the new franchise I end up doing here on the show. Like, I think the Vikings series, regardless of what happens here in the short term, probably going to be ending sometime before the next Madden comes out. I want to really focus a lot of my attention on the Titans and then the franchise I ultimately do in this game. And that's kind of my plans for the summer overall. Can we get an out? Got him. So I'm on a much older update for Madden. I do use Matt 10 sliders, but I'm playing on a patch from November and I haven't updated my game since. But I would be using whatever Matt 10 has. As that's drilled deep to right center field and will score one. A's chipping away. I think I'll do one more game after this with quick counts to make it go by a little bit faster. So I like to get out of here around six-ish. I've been narrowing it down. I think today has helped Expo. We are using two of the teams right now that I've been considering. The Reds and the A's. Two teams with, you know, low budgets have recently... Uh, traded away so many of their core players. We've talked about the Pirates. We've talked a lot about uh, the Angels. The Cubs have been a team people have talked about today. But I'm really interested in one of these low budget teams and oh my that's deep down the line hooking foul. I'm really interested in this budget uh, challenge. In the right. The A's will not go away quietly. I haven't considered the Nationals as much because they were a recent World Series winner. Moneyball 2.0 with the A's. I was already thinking about if I took the A's, you know, that first episode would be called like Moneyball 2.0. And going into what that means to me. One, two. Oh, man. You got to be kidding me here. Can we get this last out? I might have to... Get the closer warm for this. Three and two. Got him. The game is over. 
eight to six. Yeah, I've checked out teams like the Mariners and the Orioles, and they're kind of a stage, you know, past a full-on rebuild. And I feel like I want to take a team that needs a lot of work and doesn't spend a ton of money and allows me to focus a lot on scouting. Trying to find those superstars. I mean, a lot of teams are interesting for very different reasons. Hunter Green had a heck of an outing. All right, that was one. We are going to do a game now. I want to play as the Pittsburgh Pirates. Because I'm very intrigued with them. And who should we play against? Another team we've been talking about today. I feel like I don't need to see the Angels as much. I haven't played Road to the Show, Jace, in this game. I don't think I'll be playing it this year at all. I want to focus primarily on franchise. We can play against the Cubs. All right, Pittsburgh. We are going to go with quick counts. Nice shirt, thank Kane. Thank you. Thank you, Quentin. You have a nice shirt, too. All right. PNC Park. Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. Division rivals. Here's some of the pregame uh, presentation that I've, uh, I've liked to see here. I love including this stuff in my franchise videos. I've noticed this year the Angels are OP in Sim. Hmm. I haven't done any, like, simming to check out who sims well or anything yet. Leading off the afternoon for the Cubs. The second base Nico. Rowanzi Contreras. Am I saying that correctly? He is the ace. Ooh, crack to center, sending Reynolds back, and he gets there. Dansby Swanson. There you go. That was a good slider. And now Ian Happ. Keep giving me 1-1 one, one counts. And popped up for Hayes. Marcus Stroman. Here's O'Neal Cruz. He'd be one fun player to use on the Pirates. Big cut there. Couldn't connect. I think a little early. Probably going to be very early here against Stroman. I don't like that one. Brian Reynolds, quickly, a two and two count. 
Now you might wonder in my franchise if I'm going to use quick counts at all to speed things along and it is kind of tempting. I don't like to play with quick counts very often. Primarily because it skews pitch counts. You never have one pitch at bats. You don't get into the flow of an at bat as nicely. I don't expect I'll use quick counts very often. Ah. One thing I sometimes do to speed games up a little bit is I go into like quick manage and maybe I simulate some of the middle innings. So that's something I might do to speed things up. Like play the first three, sim the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings, and then come back for the seven, eight, nine. That's just one option. Also, uh, like player lock games are nice for that. Getting uh, progress and less time. But I'm going to have to feel out what people like to see in those videos. Oh my! That's the first homer I think I've hit in this game. 475! Ho ho ho! Carlos Santana has left the building. I didn't know he had 475 still in him. Oh yeah, that sound will never get old. I need to see that replay. Oh yeah. Yep, that's a river shot right there. <laughs> oh, man. That was incredible. G-Man Choi to right field, and it's gone. The Pirates might be too good. Where do you think Lamar gets traded to? You know, I've thought Atlanta was an intriguing team. I know they're not like a, a team that was would be likely to win, like, significantly, but that is a weak division. If you have a quarterback, you have a chance. I think Atlanta's a really, really interesting team there. Uh, the Colts, I guess, could make it work as well. I don't see it happening with the Vikings. I think there are too many moving pieces there with Cousins contract and then what that would do salary cap wise. So Falcons, Colts. Ah, I tried to hold back on that. That time he didn't miss over the plate with his slider. That's a sign that you should use the Pirates. We've had a lot of signs, though, in this stream. We've had signs for the A's, the Pirates, and the Reds throughout the stream. Yeah, I think I'm probably... I wouldn't do it often, I don't think, but I think I'd be willing to do quick counts in franchise. I'm probably going to test everything and see what, you know, gets good feedback. I wouldn't do, like, big games or playoff games with quick counts, but it's just trying to find a creative way to get through the 162-game schedule and to do it fairly quickly in a way that doesn't take forever. And that's why I have, you know, a format where we experience games in so many different ways. The other thing I don't mind doing is 
Maybe I'm away from my setup, but I have a game playing. You know how we were opening cards earlier and we had the CPU just playing a game out? I have no issue, you know, walking away and leaving a game up to get recorded and then put the highlights into a video just to get more. Might be a couple highlights in there to use and I like that too. I also like the idea of doing some occasional streams and including those highlights in episodes and allowing those streams to just kind of be a way to see a lot more of the team, kind of optional content. Broad question, but what exactly is this franchise going to be? Just uh, pick a team and try to build them up the best I can over many years to see if we can build a winner. Much like the other series I've done over here, I just haven't done it yet with MLB, and that's about to change. Punch down the left field line. As a Viking fan, I'm not in on this quarterback class. Anybody worthwhile will cost too much draft capital that we don't have. They are in a weird spot. It depends how aggressive you're willing to get. I think trading a future first round pick, if you see an opportunity, is you know, the thing that would be setting up for a team like the Vikings that doesn't have the early pick to make it happen right now. But either way, they have a lot of needs and very few ways to fill those needs at the moment. The one thing I think that you have to remember, though, with the Vikings is that the bulk of the rebuilding that has to be done is on defense, and they play in the NFC. So I think they're still far away from being a, a championship contending team. But I do think, you know, them being competitive and possibly a playoff team again, I don't think would be asking much. Although my feeling on things right now is they are going to take a pretty big step back this year, and I'm not sure they're going to be a playoff team. But we'll see how I feel after the draft. I think right now, it's not like I have a super negative feeling about specific players on the team or that it's a Kirk Cousins related opinion. I just think like, you know, they caught a really good, uh, you know, really good variance last year. One score games went their way. Green Bay was terrible for 75% of the season. They went uh, five and or four and two in division. Every year things are different, and every year they've made the playoffs, I assume they'll take that next step the following year, and they have not done that in over a decade. The last time they had back-to-back -back seasons in the playoffs was 08-09. And uh, I just think the Vikings might not be very good this year, and I say that as a Viking fan. That's a strikeout. I think Detroit deserves to be the division favorites right now, and they currently are from what I've seen. The Packers over under at 10 wins. I would take the under all day because the Vegas total would be 7.5 or around that. A 10-win projection is reserved for, like, teams with 70% chance or higher making the playoffs, roughly, I'd say. Some of these at-bats are going by so quick. I'm not used to quick counts. Do you think Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry can carry their teams to the playoffs this year? Also, do you think we will get a Super Bowl rematch? I don't think uh, in the AFC a running back-led offense is going to get that done. I think that it's uh, two quarterback heavy. I think the heavyweights are really, really strong. You have a lot of Super Bowl caliber teams there in the AFC. I think if either one were in the NFC with a situation like Detroit with a really good line and improving defense, that would be a lot easier. But Tennessee, first off, I think they're going to be awful this season. And the Raiders, there's not really any reason to be like high on them right now. Up for the 
Chuck shortstop. Oh, yeah. That missed. That's a ball. I will be playing the games in the, like in the Rockies franchise, yes. Hit. Two balls, two strikes. I'm a Titans fan, and I think we have a good shot at first overall pick next year. Now, I do think that the Titans right up the middle. Nice play at short. That's why they paid him. I think they are a very well-coached team in general, and I've always liked Vrabel. But I just think that, again, the AFC is too good. I think that they need so much more offensively than Derrick Henry. And I, I just don't see it happening with Ryan Tannehill and the core they have right now. The Jaguars are a significantly stronger team. We'll see what happens with the Colts and the, uh, the Jags. Both those teams have brand new coaches. Do I think Vrabel gets fired at some point next season? Possible. Um, I've always felt that he's a really solid head coach and maybe gets more out of the team than you'd expect. Okay, I don't know why I swung at that. I think I was waiting for a curveball. That was awful. I think this is out for Game Pass tomorrow. If I'm not mistaken. Ah, just a piece of it. Nice pitch. Yeah, I do think, much like in my franchise, the Titans need to uh, think about their, their rebuild a bit. The days of just, like, building around a second contract running back are really over. That's a ball. Nice play by Choi. Out at second. Double play. I think the, the road for the Titans to be, you know, in the in the mix next year, they've really got to do it with defense because I just don't see it happening with that offense. Even if Derrick Henry has a really big year, I think they need to somehow come out with, like, a top 10 defense and, you know, beat up on the Texans and the Jaguars or the, the Colts, and, and maybe steal a game or two against the Jaguars. I think they have to be really good in division, like 5-1 and one good. Right to Choi. Top three teams in the AFC and NFC. Thank you for the Super Chats. In the NFC, I'd say Eagles. It's so funny how fast it drops off, by the way, after the Eagles. Uh, Eagles, Cowboys, San Francisco... And then in the AFC, obviously, Kansas City. Give me Cincinnati. And Buffalo. Two and two. Bottom four. Ah, I don't like how late I'm getting on some of these swings right now. If the Jets get Rodgers, I don't think they'll be favorites, but I think they'll be within a game or two of the Bills looking at uh, odds. Because they'll have, uh, they have a, a great roster if you're saying Aaron Rodgers steps in there. And I think that 
This will probably be, uh, you know, a situation that takes it pretty close to the draft. Oh, I love the Lions moves. I think the, I look at their moves and I think they're going for the division this year and they're really trying to uh, have that big year. They signed a lot of veteran defenders in the secondary. You know, they have this great offensive line. They have some really good playmakers on offense. They have a good thing for Jared Goff. You know, if you're going to have a non-elite quarterback, you need to give him, you know, an above-average offensive line. Give him some good weapons, and they've done that. I still think they could use a weapon, and I'm not quite sure, like, where is Jamison Williams at this point? Because I think he had one catch last year against the Vikings for a touchdown. But they traded away Hawkinson, so they really don't have anything at tight end. They have just blockers, basically. Brock Wright and... Oh, man, I can't remember the, the other guy. Mitchell, something, James Mitchell. So I, I like what the Lions do when you consider the NFC North, you know, is likely losing Rodgers. The Vikings don't have a lot going for them well defensively. And they played, you know, an unsustainable style last year and they have to find better ways to win. So, I mean, that's the Lions division if they want it this year. All right, Dansby in a two-run game. Two and one. Runners at the corners, one down here, top five. There we go. Two and two. two, and two. two. Ooh, keep it down. Let's go with the slider. Too high. Three and two. Up the middle. Cruz to the bag. Got him. Double play. What do you guys think of this quick counts? I mean, this is... It's quick. I kind of like it. It's a fast pace of play. I know it screws up pitching counts and stuff like that. But that's like the only... And then you don't get the flow of the at-bats, of course. But... I don't hate this. Is it going to be similar to your Madden rebuilds? In some ways. It is meant to go by, you know, faster and hopefully get, uh, you know, through seasons in a decent amount of time. But it's not going to be a series where I only watch the games play out. You're going to experience games in a lot of ways. I'll be playing through full games, maybe some quick counts, some player lock some quick manage and then jumping into a game so in some ways it will be like the vikings franchise with the big difference is i'm actually playing i haven't decided on a team but i feel like you know the the reds a's and pirates are really the teams i'm feeling the most yeah the one thing you lose though is uh one pitch at bats. What's Strowman's pitch count at here? 95 in the fifth inning, and we have, you know, three runs on five hits. Like, if I played this through, he'd probably be in the 70s right now for his pitch count. Like, there's a strikeout. You got to be ready. You step in there all of a sudden with two strikes, and uh, your approach has got to change. That was an awful swing. But I think like in the early rebuild years when we know a team might not be good, quick counts is probably a good call. How you doing, Tay? I'm doing pretty good. I feel like the Rockies may be the most intriguing rebuild. I've been rebuilding them for two years over on my main channel. And it's been... Uh, a fun series, but certainly a grind. 
I didn't realize my starter was at 108 pitches. You got to pay attention to those kind of things with quick counts on. But not only do I have quick counts on, but I never use them, and I'm also streaming, so... My attention is all over the place. Fair. Off the wall. Feel like it's better for games you watch, definitely not for games that you play. Okay. It's an interesting call there. I'm gonna try everything. You know what? I'm gonna put a poll in here just to get an initial idea. I know there's gonna be some that like it, some that don't, but I'm a big fan of these polls. If I had the pitch clock right now, it would be a problem. And this wouldn't be like, you know, every game quick count. It's more like on occasion. If I want to play maybe uh, a whole series in an episode and quick counts allow me to do that. What did the teams that slowed down Jefferson do so well? And what do you think the key is to slowing down Diggs, Chase, Adams? Well, I think when the Packers had success doing it against Jefferson, they had Jair covering him a lot more often. And they also bracketed with a safety a lot more often. So they, they covered him completely differently. But also, I think it also uh, it starts with getting pressure on the quarterback and not letting plays to go as they're uh, designed and just throwing off the entire plan. You know, I've watched the Vikings play so many games in the last decade because they haven't had a very good offensive line. And I've watched so many where they are clearly overmatched and there's just no fixing it. You know, having a Justin Jefferson doesn't fix the fact that your offensive line can be terrible and overmatched in a game. And he's not always going to be your way of solving that either. That's going to tie things up. I mean, ideally, you'd find more ways to use a guy like that to hopefully get the defense to change. But it's you who has to adapt to all that pressure. And it's a frustrating way to lose. Like, I've watched the Vikings lose the same games the same way so many times. You go back to last year's Cowboy game. I've seen that game a dozen times in the last few years. Runner goes, and we lost our lead, by the way. So, I mean, if you can pressure a quarterback, you can probably slow down the team's number one receiver just because you're going to get sacks and third and longs and very quick three and outs. And then a, a method of double coverage I've always liked is put your best corner. I mean, there's multiple ways you can do it. But depending on your scheme, if you can use your best corner on the second best receiver, but then use some sort of uh, double coverage technique on the number one, that's an option. Nice. Typically, you know, you're going to stick your number one on their number one. That way you don't have to adjust the scheme as much. But honestly, I think the easiest way to slow down a receiver has nothing to do with the receiver. you got to affect the quarterback. I really dislike quick counts unless it's done sparingly. Yeah, I think it's going to be somewhat divisive as that's, uh, that's Carlos Santana getting hit. No year-to-year -year saves, unfortunately. I'm ending the poll here. 83 votes. It was 66% uh, yes, 33% no.
G-Man Choi. Trying to get this lead back in our possession. That is going to get through into right field, and Choi gets his second hit. All right, we got two on, nobody down. Let's go grab that lead. Keep Ryan. I think in general I'm a fan of the pitch clock. But I wonder if, like, could you have a warning instead of, like, automatic strike, automatic ball for a first infraction? Ah, jammed again. Might drop in. Oh, it did. Got so lucky on that. I think I'll like it for everything that isn't the ninth inning, honestly. I don't want it to decide games, but speeding up games in general is uh, something I'm okay with. Possibly on the next Super Mega Baseball, but we haven't heard about that in a long time. I'm not sure what they're working on. You should test hitting with the strike zone completely off. I think you'd see uh, some bad swings. Oh, no, he came up empty. Everybody's moving up. Two-run score, and the Pirates go up 5-3. Uh-oh. Jack Sawinski with a line drive into right. Those are the toughest ones to read in the outfield. 11 degree launch angle, 110 exit velo. Castro into right, and everybody can move up once again. Buckos go up three. SMB4 just got raided? Well, that'll be on my radar. Regardless of whether or not they have won yet, what teams do you think do the best job at team building from an offense and defensive line, secondary quarterback, head coach? I've always felt like both the Ravens and Steelers do a pretty good job in their front office of uh, maintaining their defensive identity and being like uh, teams that are always like in the conversation. You know, they, they've won their divisions and went to the playoffs a bunch. But they're rarely, like, the favorites to go all the way. I think Philadelphia is kind of the, the gold standard right now of front office management and just maintaining uh, their roster. I also like what John Lynch is doing with San Francisco. I mean, they talked about it at the very beginning of their rebuild. Their focus was on building a Super Bowl caliber defensive line, and they have stayed true to that philosophy, and they've moved on from players. They missed on Solomon Thomas, but they've always managed to keep that their strength and their identity. And they've built, like, an offense where every player is, like, there's no square peg round hole situation like the offense is constructed very meticulously and so I love the way they do things as well I just want my Falcons to win the division maybe you get Lamar and maybe you celebrate but maybe not But now it looks increasingly likely that he's not going to be going back to the uh, to the Ravens. Of 
put in Yarlin Garcia, the lefty. Get him warm. Yeah, that was a bad swing. I have some where I was just completely off. I had like four or five like money swings in a row, but then a really, really bad one. Lamar is from Florida, correct? I know there are a lot of rumors about Miami like last year, but that doesn't seem like it's close at all. Definitely not the Jags. And I don't know, the Bucks. you know, they're, they're so... This is a new era really starting for them. And... I don't think you typically see teams in their position make the aggressive move for a quarterback like that. What about Seattle, Dallas, and Buffalo? I think Dallas, I think Jerry Jones is a little bit underrated as like a general manager and stuff. He's done a pretty good job over the last 10 years with some things. I think he has a few blind spots. Maybe a little too... Uh, loyal to Zeke at times and obviously now they released him but I think sometimes they uh focused a little too much on him Seattle I think they deserve some credit although they they did a phenomenal job last year and I love that uh they've managed to not be terrible after trading away Russell Wilson and now they are in a position to not have to suck defense is getting a lot better nice strike three keep that runner at third base so I think John Schneider's pretty good but I also think that they spent too many years getting these random guys in the first round that didn't pan out so I'd have him a little bit lower Buffalo, I think they've done a really good job building up that team. I do like Brandon Bean a lot as a GM. I like a lot of what they've done on defense. I actually am a little bit underwhelmed by some of their like offensive decisions. Outside of, like, having Stefan Diggs. Now First I do think Buffalo needs to find that other weapon, whether it be a running back or receiver, tight end. I was late on that? I gotta get in the cage. Robert Stevenson had a good year with him in the Rockies franchise. It did not look like that. <laughs> Where do I think Zeke ends up? Who could use a grinder? One team that comes to mind that I wouldn't hate, but I wouldn't want him to be the primary or anything. I think Seattle's kind of interesting with uh, Penny gone. See you later. What settings do you use for pitching and batting? So I use uh, pretty old school settings. I play on Hall of Fame difficulty. But I do have uh, classic pitching, so I just aim, choose the pitch, and player ratings take over. 
And for offense, I do button input with a timing interface. I do not aim with a PCI. It's all about player ratings and timing up the swing best I can. Patriots? I mean, Zeke does feel like a Patriots running back. That I don't hate that at all. He'd be replacing Damian Harris. I didn't mind the Harris signing with Buffalo, though. I think, like, a, a good grinder like him would be uh, welcome there. I felt like they were missing kind of that role in their backfield. Singletary did a pretty good job at times, but I just... I don't know. I, I never really saw him and felt like you need to give him, you know, 12, 14 carries a game or anything. I've already recorded that trade deadline, Austin, so it would be too late for that. Two, one. Didn't even flinch. You know another team? What about Baltimore? We don't really know what their offense is going to look like next year. We don't know who their quarterback is going to be week one. What about Zeke in Baltimore? He could be like Gus Edwards, but Ezekiel Elliott instead. JK and Gus already, Gus gone. Depends if you view him as an upgrade over Edwards or if it's meaningful at all. Tyler Huntley was a pro bowler, never forget. So was Kirko. Going to left center, and that might play another run. Wave him home. RBI triple. Oh, man, I would not hate that for the... I haven't thought about the Chargers this entire stream. Not even one time. Thank you for bringing up the Chargers because, you know, for years they could not find, uh, I think, a quality complement to Austin Eckler. And I think Zeke would be better than their attempts at finding that guy. Now, I also know Eckler wants a new deal or potentially out. So that would, you know, mess with some things there. I wonder what's going to happen. Because, you know, there are very few teams that you'd be like, yeah, they're really looking for a running back right now, and they should trade for one. Like, oh. I don't know. I'd like to see them come to an agreement because I, I think that he's, he's done so well on that offense, and I doubt another team would, uh, you know, use him as well. Maybe uh, maybe in, like, Denver, but they wouldn't trade him there. Like, I think Sean Payton would know how to use him. But he ain't going to Denver. Zeke on Atlanta? I think with Tyler Algier, that would be a little redundant in role and stuff. Because I think Algier is... I, wa I want to see him more in that role, getting the bulk of the carries, red zone work, and then find a compliment, scat back type. Yeah, I, I'm really curious when Bijan goes. I think it's a, an interesting litmus test because we've seen the NFL this year. They are not valuing free agent running backs. Alexander Madison did not go somewhere to start on a big deal the way many second contract running backs have. He returned to the Vikings for two years, $7 million. And 
the deals that are being signed by guys like Damian Harris and um, who else has been signed this offseason? It's just not much investment is all. So when B. John Robinson's available in the NFL draft, who takes them? We have a league where no one wants to pay running backs. Yeah, Jamal Williams went to New Orleans. Um, Singletary went Houston. So the NFL has said we're not paying running backs. Franchise tags, best we can do. Well, when it's a rookie like B. John Robinson, who bites? If he goes in the in like the if he's like the seventeenth pick. You can really say the NFL has a new outlook and uh, view on running backs. I believe it when I see it. Yep, yeah, Penny. Yeah, I forgot. That was an amazing uh, opportunity, I think, for him to go to Philadelphia. And that's the thing for Eckler. Like, when it comes to trades... Who has the leverage? Nobody needs a running back that bad. Nobody needs Austin Eckler. Arguably, the team that needs him most right now is the team he's on. Eckler is a good player, and he is like a top 10 running back, but... If you don't have Eckler, you're probably going to be okay. I also have no idea what kind of numbers he's looking for. I think he's been making around six a year. You are not going to get more than 10. So is all of this just to get a couple more million dollars? You're not getting more than 10. You are not getting more than Tony Pollard's franchise tag. I just don't see that happening at all. Is that Pollard's tag basically 10 million? Let me see. And uh, Josh Jacobs franchise tag. It is nearly $10 million, like, on the nuts. So you're not getting more than that. Josh Jacobs is going to play on the tag. Tony Pollard's probably going to play on the tag. You can't get more than 10. So, I don't know. Maybe in training camp, when the dust has settled in the offseason... And they're sitting there with like five and a half million dollars in cap space or whatever the figure is going to be. They can give Eckler a two million dollar raise and he shows up to camp. That's kind of how I see this playing out. Because I just don't see it being better anywhere else. I get him wanting more and everything. He signed a deal that was extremely team friendly. And he's still 27 with some value, but still. The market is what the market is. That was a fun game. We put up eight runs. Ten hits. I want to see my batter analysis, actually. Yeah, that uh, lower left quadrant or uh, zone. That's an issue. A lot of hard hit balls in that game for us. Give me the highlight reel. I, I never check this out. Like, I want to see him. I think Eckler can get around 10 from a team. Yeah, I think 10 is the ceiling. I think two years, 20 million, like, guaranteeing the first year and 
Like the the Madison deal was seven million dollars and like over five, I think, guaranteed. Like maybe you can get a team to go two years, twenty, fifteen guaranteed or something. Maybe. But are you going to trade to do it? Or does he have to get it from the Chargers? Because if they don't like what anybody's calling to offer, then they can ride this out till training camp. And if he will not show up, if he's willing to hold out, then you make the call if you are going to trade him for whatever you can get. Or if you have cap space to just give him a new deal and get him back on the field because you haven't brought in a good second running back anyway. I agree, Mike. He would have been great there. But it's a lot of fun seeing CMC on a team where it's like... That team is so perfect for him to succeed in their running scheme. I think, obviously, uh, some teams would use him more as a receiver. He's still got receiving usage. But uh, I love the way San Francisco deployed him last year. That was a very fun game. I got a big decision to make soon on the channel as to who my franchise team will be. I'm still going through it, but I think today, uh, I think today helped. Definitely got closer to knowing who uh, I want to use when it's time to launch a new franchise, hopefully uh, in the coming days. So that's going to do it for me, everybody. I hope you had a good time with the stream today. Please leave a like if you wouldn't mind. Subscribe if you haven't for the new franchise that will be starting up here on MLB The Show 23. I think ideally I would get uh, the first episode out in the next two days. And if I can do opening day on opening day, I think that would be fantastic. So thank you all for coming today, spending some time with me. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Take care. And thank you again, PlayStation, for giving me a code for this game, the cards we opened today, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, very grateful for that. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time.